Well, welcome along to the Sporting Life Time for our weekend preview. David Orr joined again by Ben Linfoot and Matt Brocklebank to look ahead to the action. And we've got a super Saturday to look ahead to. We're going to start at Haydock, their big jumps race of the season, the Betfair Chase. We've attracted last year's Gold Cup winner, last year's Betfair Chase winner, Apple Tar. And Ben, if you look at the Time Farm ratings, he's a genuine superstar, but he's got plenty in hand of these on his best form. He absolutely has, Dave. Yeah, when you look at his win in this race last year, where he sauntered to a 22-length success over a Haydock specialist in Royal Pagai, and then he even bettered that form at Cheltenham in the Gold Cup itself, which means he's uh, £14 clear there on time form ratings, and you can absolutely see why. He is a superstar. He is the best day in chaser around. There is a question mark with him of the amount of rain that Haydock have had this week. It asks a new question of him. You know, it's going to be a very different test. I think when you look at the times, actually, when you look at when he won last year, he won it 34 seconds quicker than when Bristol won it the year before on heavy ground. Now, if you're working at four lengths per second, that equates to 136 lengths difference in um, performances from one Betfair chase to another. So it, it's going to require a different skill set this year. Has he got that in him? Let's have a look at that win last year. I mean, th this was the start of his campaign and it wouldn't be the deepest Bet fair chase, but there's a man with a victory. That, that I mean, it speaks volumes that this got people drawing comparisons with Cartel Star. Well, yeah, yeah, and you can see why because Cartel Star was so brilliant because he he had a high cruising speed, he had a turn of foot, he had just a brilliance about him, and he did it year after year after year. Now that's what A Plutard has got to go and do now to to be mentioned in, in that sort of company. But you just feel he has. He's he's only eight years old. Look at how he just runs away from Rapa Guy this day. I mean, it really was spectacular. And to back it up with an even better performance at Cheltenham was was ridiculous, really. And uh, we know he's done it once. We know he's done it twice. Now he has to go and do it again and again to to be mentioned in that in that sort of company. But. He's still a young horse, you think he can, and you know, it's just so exciting to see his reappearance this weekend. Right, Matt, we've got another video clip of Apple Utard in winning that. It was a remarkable win in the Gold Cup as well. The distance he put him set between himself and his rivals off the back of the last in particularly impressive. Yellow colours there on the left hand side of the group, just jump to the second lap, protect to that. Why can he close this gap on Saturday? <coughs> um He's going to struggle because, as Scoop touched upon, you get wide margin winners in this race. You get wide margin winners um, at Haydock. We'll probably see it in handicaps as well. But Protector out here, um, he, he, I mean, he clobbered that fence there, so it's probably slightly exaggerated. That was the final fence. He, he made a real mess of it. But look at the way he knuckles down here. He looks like he's going to get swallowed up and finish fifth or sixth. He really toughs it out. He's got the heart for this sort of race. I, I have absolutely no doubt about that. Um, one very minor thing is that um, we went to see Dan Skelton a few weeks ago, and he said that he's just sort of tinkered with his breathing again over the summer, which I know he's you know a lot of trainers do that Paul Nichols we know does it a lot it can help it would probably worth stressing that protector at himself uh, the first time he had a real proper wind operation he won the grade one at Aintree uh, on his very next start so they've sort of used that in the past to just eke out a little bit of improvement um, I suspect this course is probably going to suit him as well we don't know um, but when it comes to first time out flat left-handed track on soft ground we saw it in last year's many clouds um, that was the the chase at Haydock and let's just for a second applaud Skelton and the team for coming to this race they could easily have gone for another crack at that race because they know that entry suits him but I think um, Haydock will be absolutely fine for him it's just bridging that class gap and as you say um, it's going to be it's going to be a really really tall order and I think if people are playing having a bet in this race looking at various markets he's the one horse I'd say that he's going to really go out there and not not expect to beat Aplutard, but I think they're expecting him to put up a seriously strong effort against this horse. Um, and in doing so, it might just open the door for another horse to maybe pick his pocket if he does get tired late in the day. Heavy ground, Haydock, Betfair Chase, Bristol de May, uh, was won, he's won three, he's bidding for a fourth, he's in the veteran stage now, Scoop. But this is him showing the fire still burns last season with another good run around there. It was a good run. It was a good run off a, off a big weight, beating seven lengths by the Galloping Bear. But... It's still, on time form ratings, a stone shy of Apple Tard's win in, in the Betfair Chase. So he's got an awful lot of ground to make up on, on Henry de Bromhead's horse if he brings his A game to the table. Now, if he doesn't bring his A game to the table because it turns into a huge slog and he doesn't quite, he's not showing his brilliance on the ground, then Bristol comes into the equation because um, we know he loves Haydock and we know he loves softer ground. And I think, when was it the Betfair Chase 
went another furlong. It was, I think it was at the start of the Bristol de May era, wasn't it? And I think one of the reasons why he's a three-time winner in this race is because it's turned into a real stamina test since they made that change. And that's exactly what this horse wants. He hasn't won for two years. Is he still capable as an 11-year-old? That's what punters have got to weigh up um, against his you know, eight to one price and the task in hand. Is, is he going to make the running, Scoop? You spoke to Daryl this week. Spoke to Daryl. I think he has to make the running because he has to try and draw the sting out of um, the uh, horses at the top of the market. And we know that he's going to jump away and try and make it into a real stamina test. Could he be a sitting duck for the class horses? He could be. He's got fold on in there as well, as to keep him on the front end. It won't be a soft lead. That's for certain. Now we're going to talk El Dorado LN. We've got a video clip of him too. He's finishing second here to Brave Man's Game in the Bet365 Charlie Hall Chase. Whether be you put him up at 50s for the King George in Antipose Value Bet, what are you hoping to see from him on Saturday? Well, I'm hoping, I'm really hopeful that Brendan Powell, his jockey, regular rider of this horse, just um, is able to hold on to him a little bit longer. We've seen it because, and almost repeat what he did here, um, he was a little bit outpaced turning uh, the sharp turn there into the straight at, at Weatherby before running on quite well. All right, he's come past horses that you'd expect him to get past um, and horses that maybe try and try to battle with Brave Man's game down the back and, and turning into the straight. So, he, not flattered, but I'd say that was a good run. He needs to step up a lot from it. Don't forget, he was giving Brave Man's game three pounds that day for his penalty for winning the Demon Chaser in the year, where he was quite impressive at Newbury, and he went from the front that day. And then on the back of that, it was kind of like, are they going to supplement him for the Gold Cup or running the Ryanair? They went for the shorter race. Now, with that in mind, I think they... They raced, raced, raced him prominently again against a horse like Alaho and really paid the price. He finished third. I'd say if he'd been ridden conservatively in a Ryanair, he, he was second best for me on that day. Um, and I think by the time Aintree came around, I think, it, was it his seventh run of the season? He, he'd probably had enough for the year. Um, so second time out, he reportedly really sharpened up for that comeback run. And on bare form, if you look at that race... Like I say, three and a half lengths, giving three pounds to Brave Man's Game, who's 11 to 10 for the King George. Um, I mean, he was clearly the wrong price at 50 to 1 for a King George. I'd like to see him finish second here first en route. Because let's be honest, if he gets close, if he gets within 10 lengths of Aplutard, I'd say he's going to shorten again for the King George. Because Kempton might suit him. Going back right-handed, he was second there last year to Mr Fisher in that uh, Christmas race over two and a half. Let's move on to the big betting race, the Betfair Exchange Stayers Handicap Idol. Ben, avert your gaze, because we're going to see a, a clip of Aintree, which features Gentleman at Arms. It also features Peking Rose, who was the Linfoot Antipo selection, who exited stage left a non-runner because of the ground. <sighs> it's gone. Forget oh, it. You've moved yeah. on. You've got to move on. Matt, Gentleman at Arms here, then, running at Aintree in the Peking Rose race. What, in, what about this performance makes you keen on him at Haydock? That's it. Let's just get stuck into some selections of this race because I think we could probably go round and round in circles. So um, he's there, the grey horse with the striped cap. He had made the running and I think that was really important as well in this race around Haydock on soft grounds in a big field I think getting in a rhythm out in front uh, is going to be important this weekend now we're seeing the worst element here because he's just boxing on at the one pace but this is two and a half miles and it was his first run back of the season and really worth stressing that last year he improved genuinely about 20 pounds for his first run over hurdles last year and I think uh, his trainer Stuart Edmonds has probably had this race in mind for a little while. He came on a lot for the comeback run last year. I'd expect him to do the same. You could have done with chiselling him a couple of pounds off his handicap mark. He still runs off 143, but he was a really progressive novice last year. I thought I was I was really impressed with, he just kept surprising people. He nearly beat LA Bell in the um, Sydney Banks at Huntingdon. Then he stepped up to three miles at Aintree and finished a good second to Giolino Bello. Now that form is really, really good and entitles him to go close here off 143. Um, soft ground he loves. He was, a, he was a good stayer for Harry Dunlop on the flat I think he was rated 80 on the flat won a big Newbury handicap off a mark in the in the high 70s uh, so we know he handles the ground we know he'll go uh, from the front round Haydock which I which I really like and stepping up to three miles totally unexposed over three miles so um, he's he's really he's one horse in this race that I think is being overlooked you can genuinely get him at 20 20 to 1 plus I, I like yeah, him each way I think he could run well then one of the reasons for fancy and peaking rose was that Aintree race has thrown up the winner of this Haydock race a, a few times Paisley Park and Stony Mountain both did the double only a few years ago, so I think it is good form to keep an eye on. We've got video form. Get a tonic. Um, it's air. Is it included on the running order? Why is this on the running order? 
Well, I quite like Geta Tonic. She's, um, again, uh, just to reiterate, we, when we went to Skelton's, he was sort of targeting this race with this uh, this mare from uh, several weeks ago. You know, it, it's one that uh, I think they've had in mind. Um, she was kept her mare's only races after uh, after finishing third to Hillcrest. That was at Cheltenham. Here she is winning at Air. You know, she's um, she was just really, really progressive. She's won pretty easily this day. And if you go back to the previous run when she was second to Murray's Rock, um, I'd say uh, based on that form alone, she gets in off a fair mark. I think. I think she's about ten to one. I'd say those two are, are fair each way prices. I think she's got a squeak. So you, you you've got gentleman arms for Matt, Ben. What what was option B? Well, I've gone from your blind panic this morning. From one rose to another, Dave. Oh, thank I, you. I, oh, there's a selection. <laughs> I do like the look of Ailey Rose for Stuart Crawford, um, the uh, fame and glory mare at the bottom of the weights. Uh, I think she's going to really be suited by a, a testing ground stamina test. She's won in heavy ground at air herself. Um, she's a three mile winner who who will want um, a gruelling test at this trip really and she's got form with one of the favourites for this race good risk at all uh, the Carlisle running last time now with Ben Bromley's claim included it's a 13 pound pull at the weights even without it it's a six pound pull um, and I think she'll come on for that run so around 20 to 1 maybe 16 to 1 later on um, I think she's a good each way bet Let's head down the M6 south to Ascot for the Coval Ascot Hurdle a fascinating race because this year we've got the return of Potentially the one true British superstar in the jumps ranks at the minute. That's Constitution Hill. Ben, we've got him winning the Sky Bet Supreme at Cheltenham. This is the highest rated novice hurdle performance in time form history. That Sporting Life Arkle favourite John Bond disappearing off the screen just there. <laughs> exactly. How, how excited are you by this hurdle? Oh, tremendously excited, Dave. Yeah, he, he is the, the bright hope for, for British racing this season, really, isn't he? When you see what he did this day in an incredible time, uh, pulling 22 lengths clear of a, a horse who's clear sporting life article favourite like you say um, he could he could be um, a, a wonder horse country and he's only had three runs and that's one of the reasons why we're so excited about him it's what can he do next well we're going to find out the the next step of his career on Saturday in the Coral Hurdle it's an interesting slot for a champion hurdle wannabe over two miles three and a half furlongs but we've seen it before I think Fahim won this race Annie Power won this race and uh, Rock on Ruby run this race as well all champion hurdle winners and yeah can't wait to see him it'll be interesting to see how he settles over this trip because he travelled so well over two I don't think it'll be any inconvenience to him I do think he'll he'll win this quite easily but it's just going to be interesting to see what he can do quick question for you Dave can I tip him in value bet he's about 2 to 7 I, I well, thought I 1 to 16 maybe would be about right it's, just, it's genuinely is about that I mean what, what is in the game we've got Goshen in there who let's well, be fair he's they hard to chasing, predict Goshen's got to give him three pounds as well. yeah. Yeah. absolutely <laughs> madness I mean they went chasing with Goshen and he, he started okay he sort of pinged the first fence and everyone thought Goshen's a chaser all along and he, he got terrified the longer it went on and he was uh, he found the ground a bit quicker straight away Gary Moore said oh, this isn't his ground maybe on softer ground I don't think it's going to be that testing at Haydot and uh, personally I, I can't have Goshen anywhere near Constitution Hill um, I genuinely thought he'd be one to ten and Ben, final line before we get weekend best bets. Lon Presse does return the feature chase at Ascot. Martin Dixon on Get Stuck In, because they're still available on our YouTube channel. So he might be a potential shortener for the King George himself here. What are you looking for from Lon Presse and where does he sit with the same chases for you right now? Well, he's got to win. I think it looks a bit of a penalty kick for him. You know, we presume Hitman's going to go for his first press for preference at Haydock. So it, there's not much in there to beat Lom, Lom Presse. And uh, on his form last season, apart from his Aintree run, um, he's, he's, got the, he's got the beating of these rivals. Now, the one thing is stable form. Venetia Williams hasn't had a winner in a long time. They've been running OK, and I'm sure she's going to have one winner and then a boatload all at once uh, anytime soon just around the corner uh, but you would you know that would just be on your mind with Lompresse at short prices so he's got to win first and foremost and win well if he's going to shorten for the King George. Talking of winning well Saturday best bet? Houston Texas Dave in the 335 at Haydock the Betfair Exchange handicap chase uh, over the Betfair chase course and distance Nicky Richards now he's a stable who is in flying form um, the opposite of Venetia Williams, really. Just uh, uh, winners all over the place. And Houston, Texas was one of those at Carlisle not so long ago. I was really impressed with him that day. He's a likely race chase. Only had the five runs. He jumped and travelled and, and, and stayed like um, a horse going places. He only went up six pounds and he's got his conditions. And he's in against a load of more exposed types. So I'd expect him to take 
all the beating in the 335 Houston, Texas. Matt, is that the best bet? Uh, 115 Hay Dot, low du Sud, Dave. Um, another for Dan Skelton, uh, a listed winner in France. French import, not seen yet in the UK, but um, very strong words from him. Um, in the yard when we went the other week. They were actually quite keen, tempted to run him in the Greatwood hurdle. They only didn't because obviously owned as well by uh, Jeb Mason, Sir Alex Ferguson. They had Jolino Bello in there uh, as one of the favourites. Now this horse, uh, in hindsight anyway, he'd have found the ground a bit too quick. So the ground's come right for him at Haydot, a mark of 132. Looks a bit of a gift to me. I'm going to head down the A1 to Huntingdon for Coolmore Hayes for Philip Hobbs. Won there last season, needed the reappearance. At Plumpton, it's good ground at Huntingdon, a speed test, that's going to suit this horse. And he looks a sort to win a decent pot this year. Could honestly, hopefully, sorry, even start with this 158 at Huntingdon. So there you go, a fantastic Saturday of action. Thanks to Ben, thanks to Matt, and here's hoping that the stars shine about both Ascot and Haydock.